Welcome to another mini video from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to work with more masks and bring symbols into the mix. I recently recorded a video working with masks and created a mask using a compound. It's awesome, it is editable, it does what it should, but I can't directly edit it. I have to release the mask, do the change, and I was not happy with that. The idea is to turn the compound into a symbol and then use another instance of the symbol to change the mask without having to touch the mask. Strange enough, it works. I have my compound, it's masking the photo as a mask to below and I have another copy of this symbol with all the elements in it and I can move things around, I can scale them it looks deformed because I use the rounded corner tool to have the same corners on all my rectangles in the mask. Scaling that down changes the shape but not the radius. Seeing one symbol can be used as a mask to below. What happens when I use a lot of symbols? Let's try it with a lot more symbols. I have this grid of circles put into a group the group is the mask to below now i can change my circle and the mask changes with it i can show more or less of my photo by using the circle if that works let's try it with some sort of pattern and i took the image of the circle and made it a teardrop which is inside another circle so when I rotate this shape it rotates around the transparent circle and I can create a pattern from these symbols. I duplicate that, make it smaller, duplicate it again and have a rather intricate pattern made up of just one symbol. I could add more on the outside but this has somewhat of a shutter feel so I quite like it. I group all the instances on the photo, turn them into the mask to below and it covers the photo. When I change the content of my symbol now you can see I have a kaleidoscope effect of the mask. The photo stays stationary but I can change what I see in the photo and what is cut out. I can add more circles to the symbol and it will increase the area I see. We can do even more with more symbols. Let's leave this sample and move on to a pattern. In this case I chose a simple leaf again derived from a circle, rotated it 180 degrees to make the pattern. Now I increase the size, it doesn't look that good to rotate because it is not even, but I can use it and add to it, fill more space by adding something like this circle or I can go in with the node tool and directly edit my symbol to give it a different shape. In this case, I want the leaf to have more detail. The awesome thing is I have a live preview. I see in my mask what I change in the symbol. So adding a little bit of a stem there, I can see it touches, so I move that bit up. I extend the leaf outward a bit to fill more space. The result is a very flexible, easy to edit pattern as a mask. For the next example, I made the pattern more random. I used a star as the symbol, rotated, scaled it and spread it all over the area I want to cover. Once I edit the star, make the angles slightly different, add more points, you can see the effect immediately. I quite like the look when I rotate the symbol. I can change the opacity of my symbol, make it semi-transparent and the mask will become semi-transparent. By adding another star on top it becomes more opaque. I can change the way the star looks to make it 
more of a shattered look for the mask. When I reduce it back to a single star with a lot of long and sharp points, it becomes very intricate. I can also completely change the look by changing the content of the symbol. I can also use the approach for just a part of my mask. In this case, I have the symbols around a rectangle. So the rectangle is not changing, but the symbols are. The puzzle pieces rotate or I replace them with hearts and just add more hearts to this symbol and have a very different feel to my mask right away. The content of the symbol is not limited to shapes. I can use the pen tool and draw lines. I change the width and the presser curve and play around with the lines. That looks a little uninspired. Let's group those lines and hide them and start over. You might have noticed that I'm not deleting the old designs. I'm just adding new ones to it while turning the old ones to invisible. The stars make it a lot easier to spread around, but some of them get cut off. It's not the stars getting cut off, it's the edge of my photo that I'm covering. There is no photo to mask. I release the mask, scale my group with the symbols and the rectangle and make it a mask to below again. I can also, when I release the mask, add to it. I duplicate the rectangle and add a frame. I scale it with the contour tool, give it a stroke, set the width and then turn it back into the mask to below. Now I can add more stars and they will cover the photo underneath. So far I've just covered photos. The content you're covering really does not matter. I can use it as a mask on a clipping mask. I have a rectangle with the heart shapes inside and put the mask to below on top of that. I can change it from the Valentine theme to the puzzle pieces. They are still in my symbol. I just turn them on and turn the hearts off. That way it's really easy to edit my outside border pattern with a few clicks. I used basic shapes, the mask to below. Started out with the compound group as a symbol and went to multiple symbols. I really enjoyed playing around with it and I hope you enjoyed this quirky mini video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, turn on the notification so I can see you again next time.